Okay, we're going to make um, the uh, Jumbotron example uh, web page. I've already created um, a file. I think I called text underscore graphic. It's basically uh, you know creating creating a uh, a seeable or see through graphic that's going to be placed on on the front end of a jumbotron, and the jumbotron is going to have a background image on it. So here I am in my ready to go jumbotron template, meaning basically everything's ready. We have a link to Bootstrap here. We also have a link to a page we haven't created yet called First Jumbotron CSS. Here's my body. Okay, here's the link to JavaScript and all that, which we don't really need, but we will keep it there. So right below the body tag right here, I'm going to again, it's all based on container, rows, and columns. We're also going to add a Jumbotron outside of everything up top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a div and give it a class name of Jumbotron. And uh, this is a, a word that uh, Bootstrap recognizes as something. I'm always going to close off my divs before I do anything else. And I will put a comment that says closing of Jumbotron. Jumbotron is kind of a new uh, word. Uh, basically, it's a place where most of the time you have um, a large horizontal, maybe it's 100% width uh, placement of a photo. But if you use the, you know, the background image CSS trick to place an image in that area, you can put things on top of it via HTML, like an image tag or text or whatever. And the, the, the stuff in the HTML will appear above the picture. That's what we're doing. So... I have a Jumbotron, I've closed it off, I've made a comment. Inside the Jumbotron, this is weird, I'm going to make a container. Yes. And, again, container is one of those words that Bootstrap recognizes. Again, I'm always going to close off this thing. Okay. I don't really have to say, I mean, I can make a comment if you want. The comments are great. Inside the container, uh, I'm going to make a row. So div class equals row. And again, row is a word that Bootstrap knows uh, and recognizes. Okay. And then inside this row, inside the Jumbotron, I'm going to make a class, uh, a column 12. So class equals, it's going to be one column that spans across the row. Call dash SM. That's the breakpoint, small. And then how many columns? 12. And that's basically one big column across. Okay? And again, I'm always going to close that sucker off before I do anything because a lot of times you'll get busy and you'll forget. <laughs> so I will always want you to do it beforehand. Okay. So in this div, again, we don't have any picture actually in the Jumbotron. We're going to do that via CSS later on. But we're also, we're going to place that Photoshop file. So I think, let me, I can check later on. IMG SRC equals, now I'm going to place the file, or I have placed the file in a folder that's, that's in the same location as this web page. And we're basically saying, hey computer, right where this web page is, there's a folder called IMG, and then slash, which means go inside of it and load a file called, I think it's text underscore image dot, and it's a PNG. Again, I made it a PNG 24 because the PNG 24 is a graphic with a transparency layer or alpha layer. And that's what's so cool about that. Okay? So right there. I'm also going to, since I'm right here, I'm going to add a class name to this image tag. And I'm going to use a class name, img-responsive. And uh, Bootstrap recognizes that. And we can do some cool stuff with the placement of graphics or, or photos. So I'm going to say class equals img-responsive. If I can spell it correctly. There we go. Okay. Now, again, we haven't done anything yet. But we're going to take this name. Bootstrap will do a little bit for us. 
And then we're going to add to what Bootstrap is doing, not change it up, but add to it in our little CSS file that we'll create. Okay? So um, just let me see. I'm, I'm looking for IMG and then text image, text underscore image dot PNG. And I'll save this. And I'm going to see if this is correct, the name. So I'm going to go file, save as. It's going to show me. Now here's where my page is. Jumbotron index, and I'm just going to go in here, IMG, and there it is, text underscore graphic dot PNG. I'm going to say cancel, because I don't really want to do a file save as, it, but it, it shows me exactly where this file is uh, on the computer, so I can kind of check around, but I'm going to say cancel. Okay, now, you won't be able to see this because it's a white background, I believe, but if I click here... Oh, um, okay, it's showing, that's weird, it's showing an image, so let me try this again here, uh, oh, it's because I already have, I already have this set up, and this has some information in it. So it's already finding this Jumbotron. So um, bear with me for a second, and I will delete that. There we go. Now I have the file, but I don't have any of that already working. Okay, I was a little bit ahead of myself. So let me, let me go back to Jumbotron Index. Again, I'm going to save it. And then what you should get if you check it now should be just that. It's kind of a gray area on top. It's a white area. Nothing's really happening. Okay? No problem. That's what it's supposed to look like. So, we're going to go back into Atom. And we've got that. We've got the Jumbotron outside the container. We've got to have the container, a row, a column 12. We have an image that is... Um, let me just make sure here, I image, I want to make sure the same name, text underscore graphic. So I had the wrong name here. I should have just checked that way. So it's text underscore graphic, okay? And I can just go here and here's the file that's connected to it and all that stuff. Now, now if I save it and open it up in Chrome, okay, you can barely see the text here, okay? And it has a gray area where the Jumbotron by, Jumbotron by default is. So that's what you should see. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Adam. We're going to take care of that later. I'm going to go down in my coding. And here is where the Jumbotron, Jumbotron closes. I'm going to uh, go at the end of that comment, hit the return key to drop my cursor down. And it doesn't matter how, how much, how many space uh, you have, it won't read empty space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make a new div, and this is under the picture, div class equals container, okay, and again, I'm going to close it, and this is, again, our second container on the page, which is weird, but it works, and inside this container, I'm going to make a row, Okay, I'm going to close it off, okay, and again, inside the row, I'm going to have three columns with a subheading and a paragraph of Latin text. So I'm going to say div uh, class equals, and it's going, to be, it's going to be three rows, and it has to go into 12, so it's going to be, each column is going to be four. So call dash, the breakpoint's going to be sm, small and then four, okay? And I'll close this off again. You always wanna do that. And uh, on this one, here's the closing of the row right here. I'm actually gonna um, make a comment. And it's like, cause we're gonna have two rows. We're gonna have multiple rows. Closing of first row. And just, this, just so we know which row we're closing. But inside this column four, I'm going to make a subheading. I'm going to say H3, okay? 
and I'm going to say this, or I'll say subheading here, and then close off the H3. Okay, now I'm going to make a paragraph of Latin text. Adam can help us with that, and we don't have to go out to Lipson.com, that wonderful site we used to grab, copy and paste, and generate Latin text. So Adam is really cool, where I'm going to make a P, okay, P tag, and I'm actually going to close off the P tag. So I have an open and close P tag ready to go. In between it, there's my cursor, and I'm going to press L, just L. And notice a panel pops up and the word lorem is here. So if I click that, it creates a paragraph of Latin text for us. I'm going to save it. Okay, now here's the thing. Here's the cool thing with coding. I have a row and I need three of these column fours all the same. So I'm going to copy this column four. Sorry, it went too far. Let me try this again here. Down to the closing div of the column four right here. Okay, so I've got everything inside that column four. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go down below it. Paste it. That's the second one. And then I need one more and paste it. Okay. And now we have three column fours all looking the same, all in the same row, which again fills up the entire row. And I'll stop the row, which I did, right here, and I'll start another row. But let me show you what this looks like. Okay? So now we have three columns of text. So we're going to do one more row in this bottom container, and it's going to be a column 12 just for the footer, the thing that goes on the bottom. Okay? So, again, I'm going to stick inside this bottom container. Here's my closing of my first row, holding the three columns. I'm going to put my cursor just below that, and we're going to start row two, basically. So I'm going to say div class equals row. And again, close off this thing right away. And then I'll say, again, I'll make comments, wonderful comments, closing of second row. And then right above that, we're going to make a column 12 just for the footer. So I'm going to say div class equals call. And then the breakpoint again, it's going to be SM and 12. That's going to be one big column spanning across the whole row. And I'll close off the div. Okay. And then I'm going to put a, oh, let's say a H2 tag. It doesn't matter. And I'll say this is the footer area, something like that, and I'll close off the H2. Okay? All right, so we have a, a second row. We have a column 12 inside the row. That's for the footer. And then um, that's closing of the second row. This is closing of the bottom container. So I'm going to make a comment. Um, bottom container. Okay, voila. So I'm gonna. I just saved it. Let me save it again to make sure. Open in Chrome, and there we go. Okay. Now here's the thing: the subheading and the paragraphs are small, and but it's all kind of laid out um, in our CSS file. We're gonna talk to the subheading and get those going. Uh, the paragraph we're gonna use the class name lead. So Bootstrap will ex, um, make these make the paragraph text larger. Uh, actually, use a different font for it and clean it up, make it very clean and easy to read, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so we got everything set up. So since I'm on here, I'm going to give a class name to our paragraphs. And again, this is a name that Bootstrap recognizes. So I'm going to say class equals lead. And I'm going to do it. I'm just going to grab that class equals and quotation mark lead, copy it, and I'm going to put it inside each beginning p tag. Okay. So save that. And again, 
it, it expands. It's something that Bootstrap will do for you. The text is larger. It's much easier to read. It's actually a different font uh, font family. Um, and let's let's make the subheading a little bit bigger. So we're gonna again before we create our own CSS file, we're gonna go to um, each subheading and just say um, class equals sub or yeah sub okay so again I got three subheadings I'm gonna copy that and put it inside the subheading tag and then we haven't done anything to it you know if I click it, we haven't we haven't messed around with it, so it hasn't changed, but it will. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to create um, a CSS file, and we're going to call it. Actually, I've already created it, but if you haven't, you can go file, you know, new file. Okay, and then what I would do right away is go f, f uh, command s or file save, and you want to put it in the CSS folder. I called it first underscore jumbotron.css. First underscore jumbotron, all lowercase, dot CSS. Okay? And I did that. And then what I did was I created a link relationship right here to it. Just like Bootstrap, but to a separate little file that I'm going to work on. Okay? So. Here it is right here with nothing on it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk to this Jumbotron class name right here. And we're going to place as a background image a file. Okay, a picture. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say dot Jumbotron. Okay. And I'm going to say background. Um... I think that'll be good. And, and then we're going to say, we're going to tell it where it is. So to do that, we're going to say URL. And then in parentheses, we're going to say, you know, how to get here from this CSS file. So we have to go out of out the folder of the CSS folder. That means, you know, basically get out of the CSS folder, go up one level, and then look for a file or a folder called IMG, and then slash, go inside of it. And I think it's called river dot jpg okay all right so let's see gotta go back to jumbotron index okay and i will get that 